Um, hello, folks, and welcome to this presentation entitled SFQM and Doctor, Keeping My Telco Cloud Afloat. Um, I'm Emma Foley from Intel. This is Ryoto Mibu from uh, NEC. And absent today are Mariam Tahan and Carlos Gonzalez. So. Um, during this presentation today, I'm going to go through an introduction, um, talk about the project formerly known as SFQM. I'll hand over then to Ryota to talk about Doctor, to show a demo, and then we'll summarize. Um, as the internet's becoming increasingly important in our everyday lives, data centers are also playing a huge part in our lives. Now, taking this into account, um, the cost of data center downtime and the rise of SDN and NFE, telcos and enterprises are becoming increasingly concerned with maintaining um, the same levels of service assurance, QoS, and SLAs as they previously would have had. Um, as, you trans, um, as you move from physical hardware to virtual appliances, uh, it's very important to be able to maintain the same level of service assurance as you would have had previously available. Um, this is because um, you need to be able to monitor your systems for malfunctions and misbehaviors that could actually cause downtime and interruption in your service. So uh, with this in mind, the SFQM project um, was created. And it's now known as the Barometer Project since last week when there was a scope change. Um, it was created because the ability to monitor the NFEI is um, critically important in order to provide um, the required level of service assurance. And when you're what you want to monitor your system for is to be able to enforce SLAs, and detect violations, and detect any degradation in the performance that could cause an interruption in downtime, or interruption in service, and cause system downtime. Now, the output of the barometer project would be um, the meters and events required in order to. Um, enforce the service assurance levels that are required. Um, this means uh, two separate sets of features, one in your platform and applications, and one in Collect D, which will forward your statistics on to higher level fault management systems. These um, platform level, these platform level statistics will include um, legacy statistics, which is um, anything available via IPMI, um, some BIOS information, so this will be static information such as manufacturer, vendor info, model, and so on. Uh, reliability, availability, and service assure, serviceability, it's a mouthful, um, statistics. Um, RDT, which is resource director technology. Um, it'll also include open vSwitch statistics and DPDK statistics, as well as output plugins from Collect-D, which would be um, forward your data to OpenStack and also plug into legacy systems. Um, now in more detail, um, the DPDK um, plugins. So uh, for anybody who's not familiar with DPDK, it's a set of tools and libraries for packet processing in user space. The additional statistics are provided through the XStats API as of DPDK 2.2. And um, these stats include detailed error statistics for what's actually going wrong, but also um, events such as um, link status. Now, um, on top of these extended stats, we also have a Collect D plugin for each one of the um, sets of platform features. So the DPDK, DPDK stat plugin was recently merged and will be available in Collect D when it's released in December. It's, um, it uses a DPDK secondary process to monitor what's going on in your primary packet processing applications. And the DPDK events. Um, uh, will provide any um, events that need to be um, addressed immediately. That would be um, if the link status goes down 
whereas um, with the statistics, you just kind of want to be able to monitor it on the side and deal with it at a later time. Events need to be addressed immediately. And this is the same with the OVS plugin that is currently being upstreamed. Stats um, available um, are what can be pulled from the DB table inside OVS. And this can be used um, whether or not you're running DPDK um, as your data path with OVS. Again, you also have events, so you want to know is the vSwitch alive and running. Um, I'll get to the status of the plugins um, at the end, um, but for now you can assume that they're being investigated in progress or already upstreamed at various stages. Now, um, we also have RAS events or RAS statistics. These are a set of platform features that provide information on reliability, availability, and serviceability. Uh, it's usually in the form of events. So what RAS features do is they detect and correct faults. And when they find a fault, whether or not they correct it, you get a lot of information about what's going on in your system at this particular time. So for short term, you know something's going wrong. For long term, you can actually see what's happened in and around um, a fault and be able to <coughs> prevent it in future. Um, there are also RDT statistics, which is Resource Director Technology, which um, offers statistics per co core group, like um, last level cache occupancy, memory bandwidth, and we currently have the plugin merged to Collect Master. I think this is the last set. Um, we have legacy um, Collect D plugins, so anything available over IPMI can now be monitor will be monitorable. Is that a word? Will be monitorable via Collect D, and there will be some initially basic static bias information available. So um, this is an example of how these statistics can be used and how you would. Um, have a, have a use case on a particular system. In this case, we're running OpenStack, and we have a VM running. We're using an OVS backend to switch to packets. So Collecti is a system statistics collection tool. It is, it, um, is plugin-based, so you load any plugins that you want to use, and they're configured to respond at a particular interval. There are a number of types of plugin. So on the right, you will see read plugins. So OVS is an example of this, is any stats that are being pulled from the system. And then there are write plugins, which we're going to take advantage of um, for formatting our data and pass it off to different um, applications that are sitting on top. Um, in this case, we have Collect D running. After a particular interval, it will go to the OVS stats and events plugins and say, OK, what are the statistics available? These will go to the underlying application, query them for data, and return it. Uh, when they return to Collect D, any available write plugins will be triggered. In this case, we have um, a plugin for OpenStack, which will format the data in an appropriate or which will appropriately format the data. right here, and pass it off to, at the moment, Salometer. In the very near future, it'll be passing this data off to Gnocchi. Um, yeah, so this, um, this data will then be available for any application that is sitting on top of OpenStack, or um, also for any, um, any format that is supported by Collect-D. Um, so this is the status update for the barometer project, or SFQM. Um, as you can see, the purple, um, the purple plugins are currently being implemented, and the orange ones have pull requests opened upstream, so you can actually um, download them and test them if you are interested in seeing these capabilities. And we have the RDT plugin and the Salaminer plugin, or the OpenStack plugin, upstreamed. So, um, 
In the future, we're going to be taking advantage of the notification plugin architecture within OpenStack so that you can directly post events to the notification bus. Um, this is just so you can have a faster path so um, OpenStack won't have to process all your stats. You can simply post events to the bus and have them reacted to immediately. Um, we're doing performance scalability and aggregation analysis um, as we're introducing each new step. Um, unfortunately, those are not complete, so we don't have any information currently available. And we're, as I mentioned, there's Gnocchi integration on the cards as well, so that you can use Gnocchi instead of Salometer for your data storage. Um, and now to Doctor, which is one of the higher level fault management systems. Thank you, Emma. So I'm going to cover our BNP free Doctor project. So as Emma <laughs> explained that now we can have the, the what now we can have uh, uh, get the information from the lower level uh, network entities and it's it's very difficult to figure out what is happening in the crowd and in, in most cases some someone say I cannot use my VM then in most cases, there is a connectivity issue. And if we use such cloud platform for the NFP or other telecom uh, use cases, it very really hard to figure out that, uh, what is wrong in the network. Because there's many packets that are going back and forth, and it's really difficult to find out what was lost, or even how to figure out the which VMs are affected, something like that. So in OpenFE Doctor project, uh, which is not open stack, but uh, and the other <coughs> open source project <coughs> for the NFA, and it's in a Doctor project, we are working to, to build some, uh, <coughs> sorry, we are building a fault management framework for the uh, high availabilities and we also try to cover some the scenario when the operator do some maintenance against their uh, environment. So in, same, in, the, in these cases like when the fault occurs, when the operators want to disable some uh, physical machines, then they have to know which VMs will be affected or which VMs have to be some do uh, uh, treatment or switch over because there's many VMs running on the uh, huge cloud platform and it's very difficult to figure out what, uh, what resources are affected, what failure or the uh, maintenance uh, event. So in Docta we created some uh, uh, requirement document uh, doing that, we identify the requirement and do the gap analysis and implement work uh, implementation working in upstream, then integrate them and having a test. So this is a, a rough architecture in the uh, doctor's fault management. And it, the VMs are sitting here. So this is a platform. And providing a VM or a virtualized network, something, and on, to, on top of it, we are having application. In NFV terminology, we, we are saying VNF. And blue boxes are, are OpenStack, and it's, it's managing the virtualized infrastructure, so it monitors uh, the infrastructure and inspect what is happening, and control the infrastructure when, when some problems are occurred or user may request some boot up new resources, then the controller will do like Nova. And also it provide notification to the, uh, some uh, telemetry services or, or alarming services. And those services will provide more information to the, uh, the infrastructure users uh, such as uh, application manager or some other uh, component. 
And as, as I can explain, so we have a map like this. So we can use Zabbix or Collectly for monitors, and we can use Congress, Bitrage, and Monasca. Might be, it can be used for the uh, inspector. And yes, for the controller, we have Nova Neutron Cinder in OpenStack. And for not, Notifier, we can use Serometer plus AODH. So in a Liberty and a Mitaka, we, we implement a missing feature in the Nova and AODH, and that was already available. And in Neutron Cycle, we also had a driver to make the Congress inspect the uh, failure event from the infra infrastructure. So the one thing we did in the NOVA is to state correction. So as an uh, open stack, it has to have a, a consistent resource state awareness. So when the failure occurs, alarm can be sent to the user, but when the user try to get the, the status of VM, and it's still, sometimes it's still saying it's active. <laughs> it's, it could happen, but we have to fix them. So we uh, make sure that there's some monitor process can, can correct the state of the servers and also the host. And what we did is mark, uh, mark host down, which, which indicate the host is not available. And you can see uh, uh, one engineer here, Tommy, <laughs> who did a great job. <laughs> and we also did created event alarm feature in the AODH, which is OpenStack alarming services. And as you may know, Serometer or even Zabbix collect various data and anal analyze those data and find out a serious or bad situation and then they send out notification. During that process, there is uh, some sort of uh, uh, polling point, which means it, it may delay in five seconds, sometimes one minute. So it's very bad to, to provide fast for notification. So we, are propose, we proposed event alarm, which will be uh, investigate uh, event and evaluate that event uh, very quickly and send out the notification to the uh, managers. So it's very fast. It's something like, it, of course, less than one second. It's sometimes like uh, five millisecond or two hundred millisecond. It's very fast. And now we have everything in the uh, OpenStack Newton. And actually, the, the, we are using uh, uh, Collecti, and those are not natively in the OpenStack, but we can, yes, integrate them to the OpenStack, easy. And I would like to focus on Dr. Inspector module. The module has to, uh, to receive various fail, failure notification from various monitors, like Zabbix, or maybe there's some sort of the monitor uh, provided by the hardware vendors. And it also has to find the affected batch of resources from the, the information uh, stored in the fault failure notification and update the status, I mean the correct status of the batch of resources. Okay. And when we are talking about failure, it, it can be various or subjective. It depends on the application and backend technologies and redundancy of the equipment or component and could be the op operator policy or regulations and also the topology of network or power supply. So it's very hard to say what is the failure. So we, we have to have a flexible framework so that the failure has to be dynamically configured case by case. And in this uh, presentation, we are talking about OpenStack Congress. And this is, uh, uh, this was called as uh, 
policy as a service, but now we are calling uh, governance as a service. And it uh, provides dynamic data collection from various open stack services, and it has flexible policy definition and for the correlations. And this, we have a policy example here. So this thing, host down, can be identified by uh, when, the, when we had such event. Such event saying uh, the, the type is the host is host and type is compute host down and state is down. And when that happened, uh, execute this uh, command. It means that Nova services force down on that host and so that, uh, so that uh, co uh, correlate the status of the host when this happened. And Congress was uh, also had a polling mechanism in it. So this is architecture of the Congress, and Congress has API facing the users. So users, can, user or another services can put various policies via this API, and policy engine can, uh, policy, there's a, a one uh, policy engine and many data source drivers, and data source drivers are get information from the Nova, Neutron, or many other OpenStack services periodically. And those are stored in the Congress and used for the, some evaluation process in Congress. So uh, Masa from NTT, uh, he, provide, uh, he proposed new feature, uh, which is a push type data, data source driver. And it enables the, the provide information to the Congress very quick. As, as I uh, mentioned, the, the, the previous drivers are getting information from the, the period information periodically, but uh, if we have push type driver, Congress can receive information as soon as possible. And this is more detailed sequence. So if we uh, use monitor here, we can, we can push data like uh, host down, there is a host down or there is a uh, power issues in the specific specific host, and then provide the uh, failure notification or fault notification to the Congress uh, as a doctor inspector. And Congress will get this information through the doctor data source driver. Uh, it, it, it just correct the event and do some policy uh, evaluation against predefined policies. And we have a bunch of uh, features uh, proposed to the OpenStack, and yeah, we, we have uh, mostly uh, landed or uh, implemented in the OpenStack. We still have a few things to do, but yeah. And how to integrate SFQM plus Doctor? It's, it's a bit difficult, but we are still trying to figure out the best way. So in this figure, we'll put the correct D here, and it will detect some failure and provide it to the accelerometer. And the accelerometer will do some uh, uh, evari fast evaluation to check the it, it, it can be a port down or port is, is not active, something like, like that. Because if we are talking about network, it's someone can allow the dropping one or two packet per second. No one cares. But so Cerometer have to figure out what could be the, the lower layer, then post, then uh, notify uh, a critical error to the inspector. Something like saying, oh, 80% of the packet are lost per second. So it should be the error. And then, provide information to the inspector. The inspector figure out that this host is 
is something wrong. We have to fence or destroy this host and, and let the, the VM owners we have an issue on, on their VMs, something like that. Okay, then we have a demo, but as I can see, we, are, we used uh, correctly as a monitor today, and we, we just uh, checking the port status, and it's, it's more obvious so that the monitor will report if, if there is a port down to the Congress, then Congress think about affected resources. So in the keynote demo, we, we marked host as down when the NIC was down. But it, it depends on the, the uh, network configuration. As you can see, uh, please, please think this is a one host. We have three VMs running on it and three ports uh, uh, there. And we have two bridges. So one bridges are connecting the two VMs, but the other connecting to what, just one. And oh, sorry, I I want to. Yeah. So so please check the the NICs. So we have three NICs, and if we have issue on the NIC one and the NIC two, we we can still communicate with the VM zero. So in this demo, we are uh, figured, we are configured Congress to understand this situation and just make VMs down, uh, make affected VMs down and let the other unaffected VMs uh, al get alive. To do that, we still need some quick hacking in the neutron, but this feature is now uh, proposed by Carlos. Uh, he's, he's my cozy, and he's, he's the one uh, originally scheduled to speak here. And yeah, now he's, he applied his patch to the neutron, then the port will be get down and send out notification to the uh, AODH and AODH will send to the uh, VM, or, sorry, the port error to the manager. Then manager recognize those VMs are uh, something wrong and do the switch over. And this is more detailed policy rule, so, but seems like we have a time, so <laughs> let me explain. So in the pol Congress, we defined three policies, and those two policies think uh, or means or. So if we get event that uh, the, the event is type host nick one down, then we recognize as a nick down. And also, if we have another nick down, uh, a nick two down, it also recognize as a nick down. So Congress will recognize just one nick or down, then uh, recognize the the, the uh, bonded nick are down. Actually, it's not, it's not, but yeah. And execute a force down port against neutron when when the when this nick down event was happened and against the network uh, against the port port that are are assigned on the specific host and using uh, the specific uh, physical network and also we have a configuration configuration in ALDH to send out uh, which address should should it send to the uh, payload notification? And let me change the screen. So we have three VMs on the on the host. Actually, there's a two host and three set of the VMs are running like this. 
and at the beginning, one host providing a services, a video services, and go to the user client, and you can see the, the globe is turning. And we also have a standby VMs here, and we are also showing the application manager log here. So when, let's start from here. Yeah, rotating. And once we remove the one of the bonded NIC cable, then OpenStar will recognize it and Congress uh, inspect the situation and correct the state of the Nova and AOD send out notification. And application manager then receive the failures. Yes, and it automatically switch to the standby VM. And this set won't change as they are not affected. Thanks. Um, so to summarize the entire presentation, basically trying to manage a complex cloud solution without proper telemetry is like walking across a busy highway when you can neither hear or see. You have no idea where you're going and you can't make a safe mo move without, oh, without complete disaster. So um, the use case that we've demonstrated here is basically painting the pedestrian crossing. Um, so thank you all for attending. I'd like to thank Riota for filling in for Carlos and also Carlos for putting together the demo and I'd like to thank Mariam as well for all the work she's done with Collect D. So if anybody has any questions, uh, now's your chance. So excellent presentation here. Uh, one question is related to VNF event streaming, a new project which you were talking in the morning, I think, the TSC. Are we going to, when you stream the data, do you still need to collect and store the data or you just stream it? Do you pass it through this? I'm sorry, I, I, I So VNF, some event occurs, I want the event to directly be taken action on rather than collecting the data. Now, how do you handle that? Do you bypass the collection? Sorry, I cannot get that. Suppose the you have a VNF and there is a failure. And I don't want to collect the data. I want to react to it without collecting the data. Does it bypass your collect collection data? Well, um, unless you have some former data, you're going to. No, you're because not going most to of know. the streaming, most of the streaming events, we want to not collect the data but react oh. to it. Yeah. Um, so how well, do you handle that? Do you bypass it? Collecty is completely configurable, and its plugin-based architecture means that you don't have to enable everything. You could, um, if you wanted, to just enable your events plugins. So that when there is a disastrous event um, that you do need to take action against, that you can do that and you won't be bogged down with any of the stats and metrics. Okay, thank you. That helps. So I have a, a question on the policies. Um, policies can be, you know, very complex. Just wondering how you test the po policies because if the policy has a bug, then I think it's very hard to debug, right? Yeah, it, it, it's it's very good question, <laughs> and it's actually we have to figure out the, the good solution to to validate the policies. But I sorry, I don't have uh, idea right now. But the the Basically, it's, it is uh, uh, some sort of uh, language and developed in the academic area. 
So maybe you, sh you can find some solution to the by data policy. And of course, we have uh, if, if we have uh, any bugs in the Congress, we can fix in the Congress project. So Sorry. It yeah. looks like a, like a prologue, the policy, the language. Yes, yes. Okay. And I think that the uh, operator or the, the integrator has to take the responsibility to set the proper policy. And there's no way to, <laughs> to make sure everything working because the, the user can do some wrong configuration. It's it's same to this. Okay. Uh, just one more quick question. The 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 backup VM does it have any state, or it needs to, for example, inherit some state from the primary when you you know do fade over? Well, yes. So actually, we are running on the the two video servers and and the enabling one to provide some uh, uh, streaming data and we also have the application manager next to those two VMs to control the, the uh, switches and once the failure happens in the, in the infrastructure and goes through the whole doctor procedure what I explained and finally, the, eventually, the application manager get know the VMs are not available anymore. Then he will switch the the data flow. Then you can we can see the the packet or, or the the streaming are still alive. Okay. Did I answer your question? Uh, I think uh, I talked to you offline. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, folks. And if you have any further questions, um, we'll be around here for a few minutes afterwards. Thank you.